What motivates you? How come you work like that? I didn't own the business, but I, I treated it like I owned it. Do you think that a good work at ethic can be instilled at that time. You work at a coffee shop, I give you free coffee all day and you're drinking a Red Bull. You better have bought that. Hey guys, welcome to the Coffee Snob Podcast. This is episode number four and today we have a very special guest. It is my mom. She's not only the store mom, but she's my mom and we are so excited to have her on. We're going to talk about things that she likes and things that she does and how she got here. So thanks for joining us today. Let's get let's get wrapped up. Let's get started. You look ready to roll with your parrot shirt. I'm ready to party. I'm ready to be on vacation and party. So sometimes you just have to dress the occasion. I learned that in uh, management training when I was with the corporation. Then I started dressing like this every day and they fired me. Well, when you love your job, it's like you're on vacation every day, right? Party time, yeah. Nice, nice. Don't you feel like that? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's start in on some questions with my mom. So won't you introduce yourself to the audience? I'm Julie Battenfield and I'm Lance's mom. And she's my mother-in-law. Chelsea's mother-in-law grandmother to their children. <laughs> she has 10 grandkids, believe it or not. I know you probably wouldn't guess. She's not my sister, she's my mom. I have worked hard to get 10, 10 grandchildren. I have begged them to both have, both of my sons to have 10 kids each. Tell and people. they each had five, so I'm doing real good. <laughs> so people ask me all the time, they're like, oh yeah, your wife was in here baking the other day and I was talking to her and I was like, you mean my mom? And they're like, Oh yeah, sorry. So stop doing that. <laughs> stop doing that. Yeah. So uh, we have a few things here that I want to try. We have some things that my mom likes and that she bakes. And then we have some things that she may be interested in. And then she, we have some things that she's probably not going to like, but we're going to try them anyway, because it's kind of just, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. She's going to like them all. She's going to like them. Yeah. The first one we got here, this is this is the pumpkin cheesecake. All right. So this is a cheesecake. We put some pumpkin in it. We've got, what, what's the what's the crust here? It is a ginger snap crust with pecans. Ginger snap crust. That is so messed up. Toasted pecans. That's how my mom taught me how to do it. You always do toasted pecans. So I'm just gonna grab a bite of this and we're gonna try it. No. What a big bite! bite. Just, a, just a small bite. <laughs> That's That's my like bite's not gonna bite. be that big. <laughs> Let me just be in heaven for a second. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> oh my gosh. Every time it surprises me. I never dreamed that this this pumpkin cheesecake would have came out as good as it ended up turning out. We have like our our cheesecake recipe. And what we did was we started looking for like some kind of pumpkin, like how to add pumpkin into cheesecake. And we found this butternut squash cheesecake recipe. I don't know why somebody would want to do that. Why would somebody do that? Somebody put butternut squash in it. I don't know. But I thought yeah, if they can do it with squash, we can definitely do it with pumpkin and we can make it taste way better. So after after trying and trying and making some and adding more or less spice and all kinds of stuff, that's where we got the gingerbread crust from or the ginger snap crust. And I'm telling you, it just sets the whole thing off. It's just, it, it's what makes it for me. My favorite part of this is, well, it's like really delicate and fluffy texture. Yeah. It's not like wet. Like kind of how sometimes pumpkin pie can get like mushy and undercooked, but this is really like a moussey kind of. It's crunchy crust, it's mousse, and then it's topped with this like amazing fluffy homemade whipped cream. It's not like cheesecake from the store where it's like gummy. It's like fluffy. We're super dense. Yeah. We're like. So this is all, all our stuff is homemade. It's usually with the cheesecakes. It's either you or me making them. And 90% of the time it's her. And, and it compliments all of it compliments it. Yeah. We even put a little bit of homemade caramel on top with those toasted pecans and a little bit of ginger snap on top. And it just goes so all good. together. <laughs> okay, so honestly, like I thought the cheesecake had like reached its pinnacle when we made the cheesecake to start with. And then we made this and I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is like my pumpkin spice latte every year. This is what I wait for. 
and this is what I want. And I'm so happy that. And honestly, like my wife's pumpkin pie is always going to be my favorite. But gosh, this is going to be, <laughs> this is also going to be my favorite. Second favorite. His bike wasn't as big as it was the first time. Oh my gosh. There wouldn't be anything left if he took as big a bite this time as he did the first time. I wanted to leave a little for Jared. Jared, if you want to try some of this, you're going to want to try some. I'll leave some for you. We'll give you a whole, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so the next thing we have here is we have the pumpkin pecan muffin. So tell us what we got here mom this is like your brainchild so we have um a pumpkin muffin and we had to kind of work on that pump like our muffin mix is one main muffin mix that we kind of use on most of our muffins but for this and we had to change it up a little bit because we do add a lot of pumpkin in it and it's got a lot of spices in it and then this is the one that i add some pecans to always toasted pecans and then we will pipe the middle as you can see all the way with some homemade cream cheese topping. Mm. And it's super good. Look at this. The spices in it, like for holiday season, is like, it's awesome. It's just crusted with pecans. Yes. So the other Toasted day, pecans. I had to get some stuff done in the office and um, it's on QuickBooks. And I was with my mom because she's training me on some things because she's just like an excellent secretary and gets all that kind of stuff and uh so I'm like paying quarterly taxes and before I went I was like give me one of those muffins and so we're trying to I'm working with her and we're trying to figure something out and I'm feeling stressed and she's feeling stressed because taxes you know and then I was like mom I have something and I kind of was like, this is the solution to our problem. <laughs> so we both, so we took a second. I went and grabbed the bag and Caleb had warmed it for me. I cut it in half and I was like, here, this is going to fix everything. And she was like, that darn Julie making these delicious muffins that I have to eat all of it when I have one. <laughs> and uh, we both were like, oh. I feel so much better now. And then we just tackled our stuff and got it. Done. They're sweet, but they're not over sweet. So it's like no. your blood sugar just gets just to the right level. <laughs> it's just perfect. No, this is this is vegetables in here. Yeah, it's Pumpkin. Like yeah. And pecans. There's some cream cheese. It's actually really good for you. All of our stuff is fat free and sugar free and not and not really. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Really nice. Okay, get you a bite because I'm yeah, getting yeah, some of this. You guys got to try that. Okay, listen, it's good, but it ain't no pumpkin cheesecake. Okay, maybe I'm just I don't know if I'm I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm burned out on the muffins because every time I try, well, every time I think I'm burned out and then I try one, I'm like, oh gosh, this is so good. But gosh, man, that pumpkin cheesecake is. So good. If you haven't tried the pumpkin cheesecake, you gotta come give it a try. I like the muffin because it's warm you know like yeah. it's a winter like treat and then it's warm yeah. and so it kind of to have with like your hot coffee it's different than a cold cheesecake i like pumpkin warm in this muffin okay. the muffins are good with just a if we warm them just a little bit and of course if people see them come out the oven yeah, they're gone. So mom, what's your favorite muffin in the case or that we've made so far? So my favorite muffin. I know it's like picking a favorite child. Yes, it's hard. Surely you've got one. I'm the favorite. <laughs> Surely you've got one. So probably my favorite muffin, and some people will not think this, but my favorite muffin is the chocolate chip muffin. And if you catch a chocolate chip muffin when it's coming out the oven, it's even better. So I put a lot of chocolate chips in them, and then I put that crumble topping on them, and then I add even more chocolate chips. They are laden with chocolate chips. <laughs> They're so good. They really are, and I, I try to keep them in the case because a lot of the kids at school come in and get them, but then we have regular customers that come in. I know one in particular that comes in every morning and says, I need a chocolate chip muffin warmed up, and I'll go, it's the best thing ever. And if we don't have it, God help us. <laughs> Every once in a while it happens. <laughs> so the chocolate chip muffin started because 
we were driving to a friend's house to have dinner and Julie called and said, we are out of blueberries. Can you pick up blueberries and bring them back? And Lance was like, yes, but we're having dinner with some friends. And so it will be late. We won't be getting back through in time. And so Julie said, can I just make chocolate chip muffins and don't like hate me, but I don't like chocolate at all. What's wrong with her? <laughs> and so I was like, gross, listening to her like decide this. And Lance was like, I guess you're going to have to do something. But, you know, if they don't sell, it'll be fine. And this is before we had like a million different muffins. We had like blueberry and maybe one other. And a banana. Banana. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. now, Jared liked the banana muffins. He did. He used to like those. And so... Uh, Julie was like, I'm just going to make this work because I, I can't wait for the blueberries. And we were like, yeah, well, a little wasted muffin batter. We'll probably be throwing these muffins away in a couple Nobody's of days. Nobody's going to want a chocolate chip muffin for breakfast. Wow. Who eats cookies for breakfast? A lot of people. And then we remembered cookie crisp. <laughs> 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 chocolate chip muffin counts as breakfast it's actually funny to me that it is one of the most popular muffins because i would have shot it down it, it in at fastest, its inception it's one of the fastest selling muffins too a lot of people don't realize even when you throw out there what's your favorite muffin you know a lot of people will say the pistachio muffin you know or something like that and um but chocolate chip sales like crazy here. We make chocolate chip almost every single day here. So you said, you know, we make chocolate chip muffins almost every single day. So when you first started here, when you came, you guys, you moved here and you were like, I'm going to come on board. I, I want to be a part of this thing. The Lingoville Country Store in the middle of nowhere. Did you ever imagine that you would be like baking and, and doing that we'd be doing all that we're doing? I hoped we would. I had like hopes that we would. In fact, I still have future hopes for homemade bread. Just saying people. I think that would be awesome. I make I, I make some sourdough at the house from time to time. I have a lot of plans, but we just so tiny space that sometimes it's hard here. Just right behind me is our kitchen. Yes. That's it. It's this big. <laughs> That's it. So I do enjoy baking. I think the cheesecakes, I know we did the muffins when I first came, but we started looking for more muffins to bake. Like we came up with the pistachio muffin, um, which was actually my mom bakes a pistachio cake. And I was talking to her one day and she had mentioned the, the pistachio cake. And I was like, oh my gosh, we could make a muffin out of that. And I remember I came back to the store and I was like, oh, I can make a muffin out of this. And I, so I made the pistachio muffins and I said, Lance, you know, taste them and see what you think. And Lance took a bite of one and was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And he just was, he just was raving about this muffin. It literally turned out way better than oh, we ever so dreamed it would it's, be. It's cake, people. It's, it's fine. Not cake, it's breakfast, Chels. <laughs> If it's a muffin, it's breakfast. If it's cake, then it's dessert. But it is what it is. It's good. People. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I have customers that come in and sometimes we have this one lady who calls and she says, hey, how many pistachio muffins y'all got in the case? And I'll go five and she'll go, I want them all. I'll be there in 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> They're so good. And you know, we used to get them. We've evolved a lot, right? We used to have, we had someone kind of bake for us and starting out and that it ended up being a bigger job than expected. And then we just were like at, at our local grocery store chain, picking up muffins and they actually carried a pistachio. And I like, yeah. pistachio then we transitioned out of carrying the local chains muff the grocery store chain muffins to making our own and hiring someone to make and then um we slowly came up with our own recipes and yeah, I think and then they like went out of town for like 10 days or something they're like hey we're not gonna be able to make them anymore for you know for 10 days and i was like uh we can't just not have muffins for 10 days <laughs> and so 
We just started like, we looked up like a recipe online and then we started adjusting it and tweaking it and messing with it until it got really, really close to what. And Julie's sister yeah. used to make cakes. So we had some of her secrets. And then of course we have Momo Betty, who is Julie's mom, who has all her secrets yeah. with her expertise. And so they kind of threw some stuff together and then have really worked in tweaks. But the the pistachio is so good. Yeah. Like it just, it's not like the chain. It's not like a bulk grocery. I don't know. It is so good. It's, it's you know, cake. Even, even but sometimes it's when I talk to my mom on the phone, she'll say, I saw this recipe the other day and it had this and this. And I thought, you know, you could make a muffin out of it or something. Cause like, I will see recipes and I'll go, I can make a muffin out of that. Like I can change it and change it up and make it into a muffin. No, like at least once a month. It's like, hey, let's try this muffin. <laughs> I'm like, listen, we just came out with a new one, okay? So we're gonna have to wait. Hey, y'all just let Lance know that y'all like the new muffins. But, you know, it's funny is, is that question, is, have, did you imagine it could be this when you first came? And like her answer is like, yeah, because that's how she is. Like she's a dreamer, right? Yeah. She's always coming up with new things and like experimenting and she's positive. She's always optimistic. Like that could work. Like, let's do it. Let's just try it. And she's such a go-getter. And so I, I guess I should have known the answer to that question. Well, and I always thought Lance could open his own coffee shop. And I've told him that before he even started in his own coffee shop, because he had such a love for it, you know, with different things and he's a good cook on top of that. He can bake, he can cook, and he likes to brew coffee and a bunch of other stuff, you know? Yeah, he's like really has a culinary bent. Yes. And so I always felt like he could do really well with a store of his own. And he has, the Lord's blessed him with it. It's been fun. Special. And I always thought it'd be great to go along and bake for him, you know? It's nice having you on board, I'll say that much. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it, I do, it's good to work. So, here. yeah, so I got a few beers to try. And okay, so you you would say, you say like, yeah, I don't like beer, but the last time I let her try a barrel-aged beer, she really likes it. She only it. likes boozy beer. She it was like, does this beers. taste like booze? Okay. <laughs> this one is 11% alcohol. It's not a beer drinker, people. No, no, but then Lance will describe beers to you and he's like, oh, did you get the caramel, the nuttiness? There's going to be all this stuff. And she's like, oh, let me try it. And then she'll take a sip and she'll go, tastes like beer. <laughs> like she can't. She, Some of those really expensive beers I have tasted and thought they were more flavorful. I, that's a good word for it. The craft beers. Yeah. Well, not every craft beer, because some of the craft beers, they taste like beer. <laughs> so this particular beer, this is a barrel-aged stout. It's a bourbon barrel-aged stout. It is called Dragon's Milk, and it is legendary. Check this out. It comes from Dragons. Hello. Yeah, I think it's like New Holland Brewery or something. But yeah, it's super good. We carry it pretty much. We carry it pretty regularly. I must say, this is a better beer. See? <laughs> she likes barrel-aged beers. It, does it taste like booze? I don't it's know if really it tastes like booze, but it's just, it doesn't taste like a normal beer. I'm not a beer drinker. This one's like a lot of flavor. It tastes chocolatey is what it tastes yeah. like. It tastes like dark That's chocolate with... Like with bourbon in it, like bourbon dark chocolate. I'm gonna get some more of those. Easy, Lance. Just enough to make me angry. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, so you like this beer? I think this one for a beer is better than most beers. It's a winner. It's probably an expensive beer. I didn't think, yeah, she likes really expensive beer. Okay, so this next one is just a layup for you right here. So we're gonna try the Woodchuck, the Woodchuck Hard Cider. I know you're gonna like this one. Like I got it in case you didn't like the other ones. God, we got so much stuff on Why don't we finish with that idea. one? Well, you know, I should have, I actually should have started with this one. I should have started with the, this one and ended with the big one. I think that's usually what you do on tastings, but now nah, we're just hanging out, so. The Woodchuck. Ooh. Ooh. This one's 
good. This stuff is so smooth that it's just, it's so crisp. It really, it, the thing that I like about woodchuck versus other ciders is that it's so clean. It's just so clean. It almost yeah, tastes like sparkling apple juicy. Some of the ciders are trying to taste like apple so hard. Like, I don't know if they put artificial flavor or what they're adding, but and it, so it has that weird like apple aftertaste. And this just tastes like a real apple. Yeah, it tastes like biting into an apple. Yeah, I really like Woodchuck. I'm a big fan. I always try to carry something of theirs, whether it's like their mimosa or the amber or... Probably back in like 2008 when we were like just old enough to drink. <laughs> this is what we were drinking. We we're so elevated. We we're so classy drinking wood chip. <laughs> so cool. Sophisticated. Next up is another another curveball. Okay. This one's not going to be a layup. I'm just going to let you try it before I tell you what it is. It has a bird of paradise flower on it. Oh, it's, and it's so a good. pineapple. It's so good. And some other kind of pod. Ooh, it smells is fruity. that cocoa nibs? It smells really fruity. So this is one that I got on accident, actually. And then I tried it and I was like, oh, this is so good. Now, this one's not just terrible. This is this a sour? You just try it. You tell me. Okay. It's definitely really fruity. It is. Like pineapple? Pineapple? It tastes like, I mean, it smells like passion fruit and pineapple yeah. and mango. It smells like mango is what it smells like. But it's so dry. It's dry, but it's a sour. I, s boom, called it. It's actually, and, and it's a sour, like, and it's not like a Martin House sour. Like, it's it's a lot more delicate. It's it's like a traditional sour where it's kind of sparkly. It's a little tangy, Some but it's really about the flavor. Some sours get that, that stomach acidy kind of like where you burp a little it's too much yeah like the pickle <laughs> sours and a lot of the there's a good there's some good pickle beers yeah, yeah. there's some really good pickle beer but so, pickle goes with sour so out of the three of those which one is your favorite Ugh. you know me what do you think the cider okay okay so maybe then what's number two what's number two for you You know it's hard for number two i think i'm gonna go with this one Ooh, the two. barrel aged all right beer okay <laughs> But you would, would, could you drink one of these like on a hot day? I couldn't drink a whole one. The sour. Different, yeah. yeah. What do you think? What do you think about those three? Yeah, I like dark beers. Yeah. I'm like. Last time we were at a brewery, I got a dark beer and she got like a honey ale or something and then she drank. We traded. <laughs> you traded? She drank all of my beer and stuck me with the honey ale. And it was fine. <laughs> I love you. But what, what was it? it? What was it? It's okay. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm that so sorry. I, didn't I, know. Like I like honey ale. It's fine. It was a banana. A banana stout. It was awesome. And they didn't even have it. They don't even can it. It was a community brewery out of Dallas. Yeah, banana stout. It was so good. Oh, that's a really cool brewery. That's a cool place. I would say my second is the dark one. So, quick question. What is your favorite part about working at the Lingleville Country Store? This is all off the cuff, too. We didn't give her these ahead of time. Probably my favorite part. I do love baking, but I like to talk to people and visit with people like that come in. Kind of get to know people. Even if they don't want to talk, I can pull it out of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a bartender with yeah. with like pastries so and sometimes, sweets. Pastries sometimes and somebody will be behind the register. <laughs> And they'll they'll try to have conversation with somebody, but the person won't say much. And so I will be standing on the side over there and I'll just, I'll start talking to them too and asking them how their day was and how their weekend was. And it's like, you gotta pull it out of a few of them. And then there's some that just are good talkers and, but you meet a lot of people. I've met a lot of people through here. I think you get that from Papa Orny. Your dad. My mom and dad are pretty out there as far as like talking to everybody and visiting with everybody. Now my daddy was extreme. In yeah. fact, it was great that he was like that, but he, we would go on vacation. And one time we were in Arkansas, I think, and he was like, I think I know that man over there. And he just got <laughs> up and started talking to them. In Arkansas, that was everywhere we went. Everywhere. Every single place we ever went. <laughs> and honestly, he, I, I can't remember. I don't know if he knew somebody or he might've knew some family they had. I just remember giggling about it because he, he either knew him or he thought he did, and then he knew him after he introduced himself. <laughs> well, check it off the list. I think uh, I think that's probably 
when he passed away, that's the most people that I've ever seen at a funeral. It's the biggest funeral I think I've ever seen too. And we were standing up at the front and I don't know how far it was from the altar to the back doors of that church. It was long, no. And they packed. said they think like at least 1,200 or more people came through those doors. Yeah. Like you couldn't even find parking places. And they just kept coming and kept coming. And we literally had to start before everybody could even come to the front because it took so long. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, it was, I dare say, it was the biggest funeral in Plaquemine. It's the biggest one I've seen besides like, you know, celebrities or, you know, people who are. And you really learned how much like he was loved, but he talked to everybody. He was loved, but that's because he loved so yes. well. I mean, I was his favorite grandchild and I wasn't <laughs> even like really in the family. I'm his favorite child. Yeah. My brother and sister think they are, but they're not. Uh, yeah. Everybody thought that they were the favorite. It's true. And they it's just, true. and he never said that. You just thought, but I, I really think like that's a, that's a legacy that we have. That's a legacy that I have from given to me from him on how to love people well. Yeah. Just because I knew him and I saw how he looked at people and I saw how he treated people and I could say, that's how, that's how I want to treat other people. That's how I want to see other people. And when I look at somebody, that's how I want to look at them. I want to be, I want to love them before I even know them, you know? He was a person who would tell you the truth, but he wouldn't be mad at you after or, you know, or anything. He would still love you. And if he saw you somewhere, he'd make it a point to go talk to you again. Yep. And so he was known for that. Yeah, he could still have a hard conversation and do it in love. Well, I think that that is, that's part of the culture of our store, right? Because that was passed to you and you've passed it to Lance and Lance tries to pass it on, you know, to yeah. our employees. Um, but Truly, I don't think a lot of people live that way or have been have experienced that kind of like love. And so it's hard. It's it's hard to come, you know, into a place and get met with this with great conversation when you're so guarded because nobody's ever just loved you just cuz, you know. And so I think that's something really special about our store. And I, I, I think that culture comes all the way back to like your family and Papuani's legacy, you know? And then another thing is, is like the work ethic. Julie, you, you're basically like the Energizer bunny of the Lingleville Country Store. She outworks all of us. And uh, she's just always going, going, going. I don't know if that's, you know, your dad was like that too. Your mom is a hard worker too. But, and I, I know that's something that it, you know, has been instilled in you. What, but what motivates you? How, how come you work like that? I don't know. I'm just, um, I think it's good to have good worth at, worth work ethics and, you know, and do a good job no matter where you're at. You know, like this is not my store. I don't own my store. This is my child store and his wife's store and i just i'm wanting to succeed i want both of y'all to succeed but any job i've worked at i've done the like the best i could do at any job yeah i think it's good to do that i think it's um i don't think it's a bad thing to outwork people you know what i mean like yeah. um and to show people that you know you could work and do anything and you should be hard workers you shouldn't you know, it's um, it's kind of hard these days, you know, even when you go to Stephenville and go to places, you know, to find good workers. We have been really blessed here at the Lingoville Country yeah. Store, you know, as far as finding like really good workers and people who who are so good with the customers and so good with each other. Um, but um, that's not the case for everybody. You know, it's um, it's hard. You talk to people all the time that are like, you know, I can't get anybody to work anymore. And I think it's good to to teach your children that, you know. So by the time a, a person gets to like where they can apply for a job at a cafe or whatever, do you think, so they're, you know, 
maybe 16, 17, 18, 20, whatever. Do you think that a good work ethic can be instilled at that time, like through an employer, through work? Is that something you think that can be taught? I think it can be taught. I hope it's taught at home first. It yeah, helps. But. It helps. <laughs> if it's not, you have to, I don't know. It's sometimes I know it, it can be hard, but um, I mean, I just remember the jobs I did when I was young and I felt like I worked at them the best I could work, even yeah. when I was young. I would say, I don't know. There were jobs that I had that I didn't work the best I could. But since I've, I've got, ever since I got a real job that wasn't like for my dad or something like that. Sorry, I, dad. Sorry, dad. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't like breaking horses, okay? I just didn't like it. Thought there's gotta be an easier way to make money than this. So, but ever since I got a real job, I really felt like, I've always grasped ownership of whatever it is that I was doing. And it's kind of like the same thing you were talking about. Like, yeah, I didn't own the business, but I, I treated it like I owned it because I really, I really felt like you do all your work as unto the Lord. Yes. And I was like, if I'm working for God himself, like how good a job can I do? And like, I didn't always live up to that, you know, but it was still like in the back of my mind, that's where I was heading. I want this. I want this to be better. I want this to be better. I want this to be better. I want to be the best at what I'm doing. But yeah, I really think you model that here. Even, I mean, I got, I got guys who are like 23, 24 years old and like, they can't keep up, you know, they're like chugging Red Bulls, <laughs> trying to keep up, trying to get wings. And I fuss at them if they choke Red Bulls. Yeah. Julie does not like energy really drinks. Like, you work at a coffee shop. I give you free coffee all day and you're drinking a Red Bull. And you better have bought that. I fussing at you for drinking a Red yeah. Bull. Yeah, store mom. I do have mama moments on them sometimes. So, so you've been given the name store mom. And besides being my biological mom, how do you live up to that? in the store? Oh, I try to. I'm sure I've sh fallen short many times, but I really try to like set that example of working hard and um, and just getting along with everybody. And we joke with everybody and, you know, we really got good workers here though. Yeah. I mean, like- What's funny is we have great, we have people who are great who work for us. And I would say, gosh, the majority of them have come to me from other coffee shops where they were just mistreated or other or other businesses where it's just like they just could not handle getting screamed at every day or they just got fired and I was like god and man they're amazing people like they they work hard they're selfless they work hard for one another and it's just like man they're just just selfless hard working good people who love people well and I really feel like if you just give them that environment to thrive there, that they'll they'll take that and run with it. Customers love them too. Like yeah. I heard our customers just rave over, like a lot of times they'll say those young men in there, they're so polite and they're so nice yeah. and they just talk. I love our people. Yep. Yes, sir. No, sir. I mean, just, yeah. Okay, Lance, I have a question for you. What's up? As a business owner, and I know we're, we're a small business, right? So like the old adage is like some mom and pop little coffee shop, right? So what do you think in a small business, what is the importance and the value of the mom role, the mother role? I mean, you have your actual mother working in your shop, but do you think that is value in consciously kind of designating a mother figure in a business? No, I definitely think there is. And I think if there's not, then you need to be that from time to time, you know, because there's the there's the mother father balance, right, that any authority figure has. And so on one hand, you've got I can be firm with you and there's a threatening presence here because doggone it, if you do that again, I will fire you, you know, but then there's another side of it that's like that's like, I see your potential and I want to help you get there. And I'm definitely, I'm a hundred percent on your side because I want to see you thrive and I want to see you go to the next level. How can we get you there? These are the things that I'm seeing. These are the bad things that I'm seeing and the good things that I'm seeing. 
And it's all potential. It's all potential to go farther. And so that's even one thing that, uh, <laughs> that, that even having people in and out here who are, who are young people, you know? I mean, we've got people who are under 20 that work here. And, you know, just from time to time, people drop the ball on stuff and people do a half a job on stuff and people don't clean and people, you know, just fill in the blank. It's part of, it's part of the coffee shop, you know? they're not going to they're not going to be 100 for 100 you know it's going to they're going to come in lower you know and it's just expected but you know there's times that you know when you first started especially like when you'd open you're just like this store is a wreck or <laughs> they didn't restock or whatever you know whatever it was you know I It's I, a mama thing though like well, a cleaning like you know you yeah. get things clean you want things clean you want to walk you want your customers to come in and things to be clean Well and it's <laughs> well yeah absolutely 110% but there comes a time where not only do you have to like pick your battle but you have to you have to like take them around the shoulder and say, you know, this is how we do this. Or, or, or it's time to say, I'm going to, I love you anyway, you know, and, and I'm going to let this one slide. If you do it three times in a row, then we're going to have a hard conversation, but I'm going to give you another chance. Um, so yeah, that's what I think the, uh, there, it's really important to have the mom's guidance, to have the person who walks in the room when you're broken, that just takes your hand and says, that's hard, you know, or somebody who recognizes when you come in and you're just having a really crappy week and things are just collapsing all around you that recognizes right off the bat that something's off and says, are you okay? You know? So even for our customers, when they come in and something's not right, to to take the initiative and say, "Hey, can I can I pray with you?" or like, "Hey, like I'm so sorry that happened," and just give them a hug, you know. I think the mothering aspect is really, it's it's coming in, it's nurturing, it's teaching, and it's uh, really intuitive, right? I think moms are a little more intuitive than dads. Dads are like, hey, this is an A, B, and C. Let's do it. And like, you're like reading in between the lines. And it's like, you know, I think that maybe they might have had a bad day. Or I think that maybe they need this soft word, you know, or whatever. And so I, I think that it's fun that we have that. You know, you were saying if you own a business, you might have to be both of those. Like if you're managing or running a business, you might have to be both of those. But it's kind of fun that we have it in two separate people here. You know, we have Storm. I would say, and we have both in two separate people because she can, she can have teeth too, <laughs> and and everybody knows it. <laughs> And I think that's one that that's one part of like being the mom is like to know like I ain't gonna take your bull crap today, like when I'm here. And I'm not gonna say wait until your dad gets here. Yeah. I'm just gonna take care of this yeah. now. There's there's an expectation when you work with my mom. So how long have you been drinking coffee? I know. So growing up, you drank Dr Pepper. I drank and Dr Pepper. No one Pepper. drank Dr Pepper in Louisiana. Everybody drank Coke. Everybody drank Coke. So what was the deal with that? That was her deep deep calling to I can remember Chelsea used to be like you got your Dr. Pepper craving <laughs> no Dr. Pepper is a Texas thing Coca-Cola is Louisiana I know that's because she was always meant to live in Texas that was like one of yeah. those early signs but Julie will you want to tell us what a typical breakfast and the life of Julie Battenfield on the mail route was what so I would get up so wait wait you were on the mail route I delivered mail on a rural route. Okay. And that's what she did when I was growing up. Yeah. In fact, she had this little mail Jeep. It was like a 1961. Oh, it was Jeep. a cool little Jeep in the It didn't even have seats in the back. She would just throw us in the back where the mail went and take us <laughs> to school. And this is back in the day when you could ride in the back of the truck. It had doors. It had little sliding doors, but you drove the they steering wheel was on the right hand side. They were rough. I mean, this thing was like begging to flip over it was like please let me flip knot on the steering wheel so you could turn a knob. <laughs> yeah, it had a knob. A knob. they should have had wheels on the side and the top because it wanted it to flip have. um it never flipped but i feel like it could have flipped <laughs> so yeah just a little cracker box mail jeep yeah. so yeah that you did that gosh 
till I was maybe in high school or junior high, right? Started off just subbing on some rural routes and then I got my own route, but I did it for 16 years. I think that you, when you came to Texas, you- Yeah, you were looking to transition over here for the mail route, right? I was trying to, but it wasn't gonna work out. I was gonna have to start like from the bottom up. Yeah. So. So typical breakfast. Yeah, so back to breakfast. Dr. Pepper in a Snicker bar. Ooh, you know, there's people on the mail route even today. We have a guy that comes in this Who's store. really similar. I mean, Dr. Pepper, Snicker bar, and a pizza. You know, do you think that's why sometimes workers go postal? It's like <laughs> Maybe that's the name. Maybe it's the diet. <laughs> it's the diet that drives them nuts. You never get to sit and eat a real breakfast or have any protein. I yeah. mean, I think if I didn't have protein at breakfast time, I'd just be like... <laughs> So do you think that contributed to your anxiety towards the postal service? Did yeah. you have anxiety? Yeah. She well, did I, it. I had good she, bosses at different did. times. She had great bosses. At the, we never heard about what was going on at the post office. She used to. <laughs> she used to eat junk, but then she started caffeinating with some good stuff, coffee. Yeah. What? Just, when did we that had start? Till. I was close to 30 before I started drinking coffee. But that was in Louisiana, you drank coffee. Or was it after you, we moved here? You know, I think it was once we moved. I once feel like it was that. once we moved to Texas, I drank coffee. There was Dr. Pepper like in abundance. I had so many over. Dr. Pepper cravings, but, so, uh, but once I got off of them, I can't drink them anymore. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of this because I don't remember having a coffee maker in our home until I got a little espresso machine. I mean, I bought a Walmart espresso machine and tried to make espresso at the house because my friend's mom had one and she made me a cappuccino when I went over there and I thought it was awesome. And this was before Starbucks. Selena, if you're listening, you started all of this. <laughs> Thank you. But we didn't have a coffee maker, right? Gosh, I'm trying to think. It seems like your dad might have drank coffee, but maybe he didn't. I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, even in, okay, we lived in Ranger, and I don't think we, did we have a coffee maker there? We might have had a coffee maker there. I know when I was in Goldthwait, I had a coffee maker. But that was after. Yeah. So this was after I started, after I started working for Starbucks, probably. Uh, so I was like 18, 18, 19 years old. And that's when, that's when we all got addicted to coffee. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. So you started drinking coffee in your 30s. Is that is coffee still your like go to or I mean, I'm because I'm pretty sure that you're a tea girl now. I'm a tea girl. I am a big tea girl. Um, I like I love um, a cortada. I do love one, but sometimes my body's like, stop drinking coffee for a little while. <laughs> you don't need extra coffee. Yeah. The last thing you need is extra energy, yeah. I, have lots, I do have a lot of energy, so. Um, I'm the opposite. My body's like, drink some coffee. Yeah. Probably my favorite tea is Earl Grey tea. And um, honestly, the tea we carry in the store is a re it's called Rishi. And um, I have tasted a lot of green tea, I mean, of Earl Grey teas. And Rishi has the most flavorful Earl Grey you will ever taste. Yeah. I mean, it's... It Rishi is good. Is good. It it's knocks really it out good. of the park. Like, it knocks every one of them out of the park. Um, and a lot of their teas are like that. Are like that. You know, yeah. if you ever taste any of those ones we got, you know, in the back, they're, they're just like... The flavor is like five times what another tea bag is, you know? And it's good. We the, Even this morning, I have a big teapot and I just put like four bags of English breakfast and it's big. And uh, I, I brew it in there and then I go ahead and add a little sweetener and like just milk and fill up that pitcher. And then that's what we have at breakfast. Mm -hmm. And it's my kid's favorite, you know. Yeah. we li I like tea because I feel like the caffeine isn't so, um, I think there is something scientific, right? That the it way that- It releases slower. It'll release yeah. slower. So um, coffee will kind of make you crash a little harder, you know, yes. and um, yeah, tea will coffee, release- like, yes. I know. And then tea will release slow throughout tea the day. It's just like- Yeah. So I, nice. my body in the morning, when I come to work early in the morning, screams, please get a cortada. 
Yeah. And then the other little person goes, don't do it. Drink Earl Grey this morning. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna feel better in three hours with the Earl Grey. Yes, yes. 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 So actually we were looking, my kids were informing me that the Earl Grey doesn't have as much caffeine as the English breakfast. And then of course the English breakfast does not have as much caffeine as like a cup of coffee. But I was like, oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So if I'm kind of wanting to like, I still, yeah, meet in the middle, but yeah. So your favorite muffin is the chocolate chip. Do you have anything in the store that we sell that you like better? What's your favorite thing that we sell? Is it the chocolate chip muffin? The chocolate chip muffin is pretty good. I mean, all the cheesecakes are good. I I just try to control myself. You know what I mean? It's hard. Control is hard. But um, I love our root beer on tap. Yeah. Like if, if you like root beer, and you haven't tried the Ruby on Tap, I think the Ruby on Tap is incredible. It, to me, it's a whole different flavor than if you get one out of a bottle, you know? Yeah. It's got a really good taste. It does. Oh, Lance. Okay, so this is, you oh, know, no. speaking of fav- oh. favorite muffin. <laughs> this is so good. This is my favorite muffin. And this is one that Brayden came up with. <laughs> Oh gosh, maybe last year or something like that. Good job, Brayden. Good job, Brayden. Brayden tried to come up with things often. He was. He loved to experiment. He did. But this one was a home run. And this was, this was his time. It was good. Oh, it's hot. If I can get it on my. I just took it out of the oven. It's so hot. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm. This with a big old cup of milk. It is so good with this a big so cup of milk. Coffee. <laughs> or coffee. Or just a latte. Like a plain latte with zero sweeteners. Dragon's milk with a cinnamon roll muffin. Lance, you're disgusting. Oh, they still go together great. No. <laughs> you're making that up. They really do the cinnamon. <laughs> Dragon's milk is not actual milk, okay? What? They can't put milk on something if it's not milk. Oh, uh, they do. Uh. Oh, yes, they they do, do, don't get my don't get my dad started talking about milk. <laughs> He'll go off on you. <laughs> I'm just I don't want to burn my mouth. Well, mom, it's been really good interviewing you. You've been awesome at the store and um hey, many years to come. You know, we've did dinners in the past, and that's something that we're probably going to crank up, you know, one day again. Yeah, when we heal from our PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> From dinner nights. Dinner nights. Woo. Dinner nights at the Lingual Country Store are, they are fast and furious. <laughs> so I think the last one we had, we did 25 gallons of gumbo. And this is like authentic, like seafood gumbo. This is like grandma's recipe uh, with my little twist on it. And I think we sold out in like, we started, we started serving at five and by 540, Everything was gone. We've really struggled to like really figure out how to make dinner night seamless because we used to do pre-orders and and then this last time we were just like, no pre-orders, just come get it. Yeah. Or don't or don't get it. Well, and it's tough because our our kitchen's the size of a cracker box. So trying to make that much in that small a space is tough. It probably is about the size of that male Jeep. Well, and we do want to try the, the we do want to try the new thing that we tasted in Louisiana that time too at this place that we that's, went to. That's and it's we a have got to do it's that. a large baked potato with crawfish etouffee all in it and then it's got now they had fried shrimp but we're going to do blackened shrimp and we actually we actually tried this at lance's house and it came out amazing so good and so y'all just get on lance because we we need to do if you want to do this and you see this then you need to bother me about it if you bother me about it i'll finally do it but if you don't i've just it'll just fade into the scenery of my mind his mama uh, does tell him randomly, Lance, we need to do another but, seafood night. So Fish etouffee baked potatoes. I'm telling you, it's a life changer. So good. Thanks for joining us. We had a good time. She's working. She's gone. She's back. She's gone. Hey, muffins cannot burn. Okay, good. Mom, thanks for thanks for the interview. It was a lot of fun. Jared with Bite of Brownie, thanks for videoing. You're awesome. 
Y'all call Jared at Bite of Brownie. Check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Facebook. Check him out on Instagram. He's all over the place. But yeah, he'll do a podcast for you. He'll do a video for you. He'll, he'll manage your social media, whatever you want to do. He'll do it. So check him out. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in Lingleville. Come check us out. Even if you've got to drive here. Hey, if you're coming to Texas, swing by the store. You're going to want to come see us. I'd love to meet you. We'll see you.